Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight as we continue our study in Isaiah. As always, we want to welcome you and thank you for joining us because without you listening in, it would be a wasted time. So thank you for making this a very beneficial time for me by you listening and watching. So thank you. We want to open in prayer and ask God to have his way in our study tonight and let his word come alive to us. So let's just join together and pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you can do and what you do in our lives. We thank you for that. And God, we know that without you, we are nothing, but with you, we can do all things. We also know, Lord, that your word is already anointed, so we do not need to pray for that. So we pray that our ears would be receptive, that you would anoint our ears, that you would anoint our spirits to receive what you would have us receive, and help us to hear what you have to say to the church tonight. And God, I do want to pray for those many that will be watching and looking and listening that they need a touch in their physical bodies. There's some people today that need encouragement. And God, I cannot encourage them, but I ask you to encourage them by your spirit even right now. And God, we will give you praise for that. Touch that body that's hurting right now and let that pain be gone in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it all. Amen and amen. Well, last week we spoke of the glory of Zion and we spoke of the Zion of the past and the Zion of the present and the Zion of the future. And today we look at a message of comfort and hope. And you've heard me say it many times and it's worth repeating I'm so glad that God does not just deal with the positive. You know, there's some people that thinks everything in life is always going to be positive. That's not true. All good things come from above. That is true. But we know that life is full of bumps. Life is full of detours. Life is full of challenges. And sometimes we need words of encouragement. We need words of comfort. But uh, before we look at what Isaiah wrote, I want us to go look and see what Timothy, uh, Paul wrote to Timothy. Very familiar passage of scripture in a couple of chapters in 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning with verse uh, 14, where it talks about scripture. It says this, but as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you've been acquainted with the sacred writings. Of course, he's speaking of the scripture, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. That's really interesting because he talks about the Holy Scriptures and it says through faith in Christ Jesus, indicating that way back in the, in the Old Testament, it was pointing to Jesus Christ. All Scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. And it continues on into the next chapter where Paul tells Timothy, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. And as for you, always be sober-minded endure sufferings, and do the work of the evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Wow, that's so powerful. See, Isaiah does what Paul told Timothy need to be done. What does Isaiah do? He teaches, he warns, he rebukes, he corrects. And honestly, we know sometimes it's hard to keep track of it because he'll go from warning to encouragement, then to rebuke, to correction, and he goes this back and forth. And we we need to go back just a little bit before we get into today's text and go back to chapter 49 of Isaiah 
our today's check was starting in 61, but in Isaiah 49, first four verses tell us that Israel is God's servant. Israel is God's servant. Again, that's in Isaiah 49, 1 through 4. And then the, it starts in uh, verse 5 and tells us that the Messiah was also God's servant, Jesus Christ. Now, let's read those few verses there. And it says, And now the Lord says, He who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and gather Israel to himself, for I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has been my strength. He says, it is too small a thing for you to be my servant to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. He said, I'll make you the light for the Gentiles. Last week we used uh, Isaiah 60, rise, shine, for the light has come. He prophesied that in chapter 49. This is what the Lord says, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, to him who has, was despised and abhorred by the nation, to the servant of rulers, kings will see you and rise up, princes will see and bow down, because of the Lord who is faithful the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. And of course, he was speaking about the Son of God, Jesus Christ. So he says that Isaiah was teaching that, and Isaiah, or Israel, excuse me, was God's servant, and the Messiah is God's servant, and he was telling them that uh, the light had come, and now we pick up in chapter 61, verse 1, the spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. Oh, catch that. A crown of beauty instead of ashes. Why Why would say ashes? Because that's what they did when they were in mourning, put ashes upon their head. And the oil of gladness instead of mourning. And a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. So God, our God, is a God of hope. Our God is a God of comfort. And that's what he was saying after he told them some of the negative things that was going on. He was reminding them that the Messiah was going to come. The Messiah was going to come. And so now let's go over to Luke. Luke chapter 4, because he literally quotes the passage in Isaiah, where he says this, and Jesus returned. Returned from where? He'd been in the wilderness being tempted, being tempted of Satan. And he had fasted for 40 days. He was hungry. And you can go back and read that great story. He resisted temptation. And then he says he returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And report about him went out through all the surrounding country. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified by all. And he came to Nazareth. Now Nazareth with his hometown where he had been brought up as what and was his custom. Now you say, why do you think God put that in as his custom? He wanted us to realize that this was a regular occurrence for Jesus. He fulfilled the law. And so regularly on the Sabbath day and regularly they, when they'd have time at the uh, synagogue, Jesus was there. Now they didn't have Bibles such as I have here. They had it on scrolls and they would take those scrolls and give them to the people and they would read them. And they gave the scroll of Isaiah and they stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him and he unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. What was he reading? Exactly what was over in Isaiah. The spirit 
of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has also sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, rolled up the scroll, and gave it back to the attendant, and the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. So again, we have a great, great illustration of dual reference. We know that it was true and prophetic in Isaiah's time when he said, uh, he stood up and preached, uh, said that as a prophecy of Jesus being the comforter, that Jesus is going to be the uh, hope of the world. But then he also says, when you read it here, this day it is fulfilled right before us in your hearing or in our hearing. But it was not only fulfilled when Jesus began his ministry. Jesus told his disciples to do what? He said, I want you to stay in Jerusalem until you be endued with power so that they would have the power to fulfill the ministry. Now, what spirit was he talking about? What was the spirit that Jesus said? The spirit of the Lord was upon me. He said, today that's been fulfilled. He told the disciples, stay in Jerusalem until you be endued with power so he can have the power to fulfill the ministry, to do the work of the ministry. And that was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. What a great, great uh, illustration of God's goodness. And we need to remind ourselves that it still continues today because God has not removed his spirit. His spirit is still uh, in the world today. And we need to realize that and to be appreciative of that. And then if we go back to the book of Isaiah, we continue and see a message of hope, a message of hope. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord. Now, who's he talking about? He's talking about the nation of Israel. But I believe in dual reference. I believe he's also speaking of the church. Now, we're not replacing Israel. We have been grafted into the body of Christ. But it says they will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord, for the days of his splendor, they will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated, and they will renew the ruined cities. They have been devastated for generations. Now, of course, here in Isaiah, we know that that was true. They had been in uh, disrepair. They had been destroyed. It says, aliens will shepherd your flocks. Foreigners will work your fields and your vineyards. And you will be called priest of the Lord. You will be named ministers of God. So after all these years, God is giving a message of hope. Said, listen, hang in there because good times are coming. That even your enemies will be taking care of your flocks. And it says you will feed on the wealth of nations. And in the riches you will boast. When we see what's going on in the world today, literally war in Israel and, and the nation of Israel being bombarded and, and attacked. We know that at this point, that does not appear that there's peace. But let me assure you that God is wanting to give them a, a word of hope and encouragement and let him know that they have not forsaken. They may have forsaken God, but he has not forsaken them. And he says that he'll be there. He says, you will feed on the wealth of the nations and in the riches you will boast. Instead of their shame, my people will receive a double portion. And instead of disgrace, they will rejoice in their inheritance. And so they will inherit a double portion in the land and everlasting joy will be theirs. We know that's futuristic. We know that God is promising to be with us every day, but he know in the future that they will dwell in the land and an everlasting joy will be theirs. It says, for I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and iniquity. 
and my faithfulness, I will reward them and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are the people and the Lord, people of the Lord has blessed. God promises that he's going to bless us. I can tell you, I do not deserve all the blessings that God has given me, but I've been blessed of God. God has supplied all my needs according to his riches in glory. Yes, I have challenges. I have test. I have difficulties, but I have the joy of the Lord and I have the comfort of the Lord and I have the promise of salvation from the Lord. It says, I delight greatly in the Lord for my soul rejoices in my God. Let me read that line again or those two lines again. I delight greatly in the Lord for my soul rejoices in my God. Regardless of how bleak and how full of despair things get around you, remember the promises of God. The Spirit of the Lord is now upon me. He has given us a message of hope, a message of assurance, a praise for salvation, and comfort to the nation of Israel. And I believe comfort to us as the church today. Promises. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For the, as the soul makes the sprout come up and a garden causes the seed to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. Yes, we know much of this is in the future, but we can also rest assured and know that God will take care of us. Then he reminds us, said, give us this day our daily bread. Sometimes we want yearly bread. We want our retirement totally taken care of. We want promises of wealth. We want all this. And God says, I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you. You've never seen his seed forsaken and out begging for bread. He'll take care of you. He is there for you. And he wants you to be reminded today that his word, his word is profitable for rebuke and for correction, but it's also profitable for encouragement and for hope. And we need to be reminded of these words, the spirit of the Lord. Jesus said it, Isaiah said it, the spirit of the Lord is on me, saying prophetically about Jesus. Then Jesus stood up and read it and said, the spirit of the Lord is now upon me. And he said, today this spirit, this word or this promise is fulfilled in your ears. And we still have that promise today that God's spirit can be with us. And he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I sense in my spirit that some that are listening to this, you're discouraged, you're despondent. You read the newspaper, you see what's going on in Israel. You hear what's going on in the political scene. You see the economy of what's happening and it's fearful and we become anxious and God wants you to remind, to remind yourself that he is our hope. He is our comfort. He is our strength. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. So encourage yourself in the Lord. David came in from doing battle one day, and when he got back, he and his uh, army, his town had been ransacked. His camp had been taken. All of his family was taken captives, and they wanted to kill David. They wanted to kill him, and David said he cried until he could cry no more. So he was filled with despair. But then it says he encouraged himself in the Lord. He encouraged himself in the Lord. How did he do that? He remembered the promises of God. So can I encourage you today to remember the promises of God, to encourage yourself by reminding ourselves, the spirit of the Lord is now upon me and he will never leave me nor forsake me. Think about that today. Let's pray. Holy Father, thank you for the opportunity of coming into these folks' home. 
maybe their hospital room, wherever they may be watching this today. And I pray that you would give them encouragement, that the words that we've spoken have, have touched their spirit and realize that our God is a God of hope. Our God is a God of strength. Our God is a God of encouragement. Yes, there will be a judgment. Yes, we will spend eternity somewhere, but our faith and our trust is in you. And if our faith and trust in you, we will never be filled with despair. And we thank you for that assurance and give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Lord, richly bless you. Let us know if we can help you in any way and feel free to call on us at any time. Thank you. You have a blessed week and I'll call you next week.